What's up, crew? Earl of Pearl here. We're back at Westpac Center with Mark Baker. You guys got questions and we got answers for you. So keep commenting, keep subscribing, keep following us in this journey. We'll make sure to get those questions answered for you. So how do you measure timing if you plant instead of slide? That's a good question. So the two best planters that I measure timing would be uh, Shannon Pulowski, probably the best planter of all time. Mike Haugen does a very good job of it. Instead of when their foot gets flat on the ground, like I measure when you slide and your foot gets in front, I tend to measure the heel. So when their heel really gets into it, that's their slide, their heel, and they pull down with their toes. So when their heel hits the ground flush, that's where I measure timing for people who plant. Perfect. Braden wants to know, what are the drawbacks of bowling one-handed with no thumb? Also, is it important to learn how to play different parts of the lane as a beginner? The ball I was gifted hooks like crazy and I hate playing far left. I'm considering whether I should get a new ball or get good with this one. Uh, if a ball hooks a lot in the bowling center you bowl at hooks a lot, you might want to invest in another ball because you're going you're gonna to be trapped right where you have to play because of the strength of the ball. Uh, the one-handed, the drawback with no thumb is your backswing can't be very high because if your backswing gets too high and there's no thumb, the ball fall off. So the people that I know who are pretty good at bowling one-handed with no thumb all have one thing in common. They're really, really strong. <laughs> so if you're a strong dude, should be no problem. Understood. That's a good answer. Capone wants to know, how important is it to slide versus stepping into your release? He started stepping because of, a bad, but of, because of bad approaches, and uh, he can't break the habit. Well, you know, it, it's, it seems to be a more and more common thing. A lot more people are, are planting instead of sliding. A lot has to do with the differences in the approaches. You know, like if you bowl on wood all the time and you go to a center that's synthetic, very, very sticky. Las Vegas, sometimes in the summer when it's real windy, it's still in the desert, very slippery. Then if it rains in the summer, you can't slide. So your weather has a ton to do with your approaches. So I understand why people plant. It's not the end of the world. It's just a little different thing you do. A lot of times people that plant, the only problem they have is they like to pull, they plant with their left foot and they pull down with their shoulders. That makes them have a hard time with a consistent release and accuracy. Okay. Um... Next question. I am looking to purchase one of the training videos, but I'm not sure which one to get. I bowl one hand, no thumb. Do I get the two hand video or the other? Which one would benefit me most? The two handed video. Because with no thumb, your swing is going to be short, closer to what a two hander's back swing looks like. So that would be the easier way to measure measure your timing. Like a, if you don't have your thumb in it, you would measure like your two hander, with your, even though your arm's back there. So I would definitely recommend the. It's still tricky because of how you start is going to be different because your left hand's not on the ball. So I'm not trying to sell you both videos. You know, they still have to have a push away. So I would, I, I would think the two-handed video would make more sense. When slash how do you get behind the ball? Arm slash rotation on backswing or is it something else? I don't measure the backswing too much because that's not where you're throwing the ball. I think too many people, this is very important, too many people try to do things they're told. Remember this, you're trying to do a bowling function. More important is how your body functions. So the pros are the most efficient bowlers in the world because they use how their body functions and then they bowl on top of it. Too many bowlers, they get in their stance and their arms facing the wrong way. Their hands are all jacked up over here, trying to stay behind it in their stance. Well, guess what? That's not how you walk down the street. Your thumbs hang in. Now, if everybody's thumbs hung out, there'd be 230 bowlers walking down the street all over the world, but they don't. So how your body functions is way more important than the bowling function. It has to go together. So I don't care if your hand's completing the ball on the top. There's a window on the bottom. When it gets you know, from your downswing through your release, you that that's right. the only place your hand actually needs to be behind the ball. They don't measure your score in your backswing. You're right. You're right. Great answer. So all because it doesn't look right on video, <laughs> there's a guy named Walter Ray Williams Jr. Who, if you just break him down and you didn't know who Walter was, you would want to change everything except his bank account. <laughs> and his results. Yeah, his results. <laughs> so I mean, Walter did some things, you know, very uniquely to Walter, mm -hmm. but obviously he had the best record of all time. So don't just go by what it looks like on video. How can you become more accurate in hitting your target if you are left eye dominant but are right handed? So that's me. So you just need to know your numbers. Mm -hmm. So my numbers are four and three which means I drift four and I miss my target by three on every shot. So simple way of putting it, if I want to slide on 20 and hit 10, my left, I start my approach on 16, I look at seven. So I'm left eye dominant, I miss my target by three boards pretty much every shot I throw. 
So I just adjusted that. If I want to play 10, I look at seven. If I want to slide on 20, I know my drift is four. So I have a four and three drift to the left. So I know my numbers. Next question. Having trouble getting into the timing spot for two-handed shots. Any tips to correct this? Keep your shoulders up longer and have more of a push away. So what bowlers tend to do is they tend to drop in their second step. If that happens, your head drops. Mm -hmm. Your head can't drop till the ball goes back. As the ball swings by mm -hmm. and your head drops, that gives you height of backswing. So then when your legs get there, then your left arm's in the timing spot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Jason Belmonte does it perfect. Mm -hmm. Anthony Simonson, Spencer Robarge, mm -hmm. they're unique in how they do it a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would teach that. They're very unique. They have kind of the same body size. Yes. They both have pretty quick feet. Mm -hmm. But for the most two-handers, it's more about staying tall through the push away. So when the ball swings back, that's when your head drops. And that lets your hands go up a little easier, mm -hmm. much easier to get to the timing spot. If your head drops in the push away, then you have to manufacture your backswing. You almost invariably have early timing. What happens with me when that happens? The ball hits the ground before I get through my ball, so right. my backswing. Um, next question. I don't drift. Am I broken? Nope. So your favorite two bowlers would be Chris Barnes and Norm Duke. You're in good company. So good those, company. those are in Barry Asher. So I can name three people that slide where they start and hit what they look. So most people do need to figure out their miss and don't even understand uh, that. Yeah, most people don't know it, and they, they get so hung up on it. My numbers are if you drift less than four right or seven left, I would never change you. If you drift more than four right, you don't like playing inside. Mm -hmm. If you drift more than seven left, you don't play like playing right, right a second arrow. Yep. Simple. How do you figure out, well, you already are trying to, you figure out your rev rate, guys, by... <laughs> How many pins you knock over? <laughs> so rev rate's only cool if you can control it. That's like you can hit the ball 300 yards. But you've only, if you only hit 300 yards and it only barely stays inside the driving range, you don't know where it's going. Doesn't relate too well to the golf course. Now the guys who watched on TV this weekend, mm -hmm. they hit it 340 dead straight. Then their rev rates are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So rev rates only good if you can control it. True that. Just all because your rev rates high doesn't mm -hmm. mean they knock down more pins. It's that's exactly right. Next question: Are you telling him? Oh, this is a question for me and you. My 70-30 rule. They were wondering if you're telling me to use 30% for my swing to relax and the other 70 for my lower body. I know that that's... That's just if you watch somebody throw the ball well. Mm -hmm. Here's how I look at it. If it's 70-30, that's a swing. Soon as the numbers get 50-50, that's a throw. And if you have too much upper body movement and you're, and you're throwing it, you're not going to be accurate and you're not going to have a consistent release. That's why if you look at some of the pros, the best being Parker Bone, 90-10. P. Weber, 90-10. These guys are the best. Chris Barnes. 90-10. 90 90% 90 effort coming out of their legs. Their arm just happens to be attached to their body and it's a swing. And at the end of their swing, they had a little rotation. So that's why a guy like Pete, who's not very big, but had probably the best release of all time mm -hmm. for a long period of time. Parker Bone stayed in balance for basically 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I look at it today, he's leading again. Mm -hmm. He's just never going to stop because <laughs> he's had such good balance. If you look at them, they have one major thing in common. Here's how the, they have forearm sizes that are the same. So if you look at my forearm, this is how you don't get in the Hall of Fame. This one is much bigger than this one. That's on mine. So right. that's why I wasn't that such a good bowler. That's four titles. Parker, 37. Same size forearm. <laughs> if your forearm gets big, it's tough to be a good bowler. I tried and tried. Not quite the Hall of Fame material. I've never heard anyone say that. So that's going to be Pete the Pete Weber, Chris Barnes, Dave Houston, Dave Ferraro, Randy Pedersen. I could just go on and on. Yeah. All the hall, Mike Alby, all these yeah. Hall of Famers, their forearms were the same size, so they had swings. So they were the most accurate people under the most pressure. Because you don't get in the Hall of Fame throwing an occasional double in league. You got to throw them six baggers on TV. So those guys had the same size forearms because it was a swing. If this forearm gets too big, you become a bowling coach. So question, would you argue that women have an advantage in that regard? Well, yeah, they're, they're just built different. Mm -hmm. So they have, that's why so many bowlers really enjoy watching the women bowl because it's much more relatable. I Nobody likes watching E.J. Tackett more than I like watching E.J. Tackett. I couldn't do that in a hundred years in my when I was 17. <laughs> but when I watch Shannon O'Keefe or Daniel McEwen or Brianne mm -hmm. Cote, when I watch them, I kind of bowled more close to them. Yeah. So that's why I think some of the women are more people like watching them mm -hmm. because it's much more relatable. True. But now in other sports, I want to watch Jason Tatum. Yeah. I, I just want I just can't believe how fast he is for six seven, six eight. Yeah. Get up and down the court, shoot a thirty foot jump shot, then dunk. Mm -hmm. I played basketball. 
You I couldn't do any of those things. I could shoot, but I couldn't do that. So that's why in other sports, we're much more relatable to watching the people that can do things I can't do. Mm -hmm. Whereas in bowling, I can, people like to watch people do things they can do. So that's why I think the women are more fun to watch because we can all relate to that a little bit easier. Absolutely.